form welcome children today we are going to learn the new chapter from the magic place textbook and the name of the chapter is oliver learns to pick pockets now this is actually a small part taken from the main novel called oliver twist written by the famous writer or author charles dickens okay now let us know a little bit more about charles dickens charles dickens year 1812 to 1870 was an english writer who became well known for his humor and keen observation of character and society he created some of the world's best known fictional characters in his novels the pickwick papers Nicholas Nickleby, David Copperfield, A Tale of Two Cities, and Great Expectations are some of his greatest works. And Oliver Learns to Pick Pockets, as I told you, is a part taken from again one of his most famous books called Oliver Twist. And this This is actually a story of a small boy called Oliver Twist who lives in an orphanage. He is an orphan who lives in an orphanage, but then he is being treated very badly over there. He is treated so badly that one fine day he runs away from the orphanage, from the orphanage. And he gets caught up in the big bad world of crime in London. He meets a person called Faggins. who introduces him to a world of crime now children it's possible that at young age especially at, um for kids for children and for young adults to fall into various traps that exist in the society there are many people out there who exploit others especially children and young adults in order to do their so called criminal activities so one has to be a little careful wherever we go we have to be careful right so let us learn about oliver and his experience after going to the city of london oliver learns to pick pocket now what is the meaning of pick pocket yes pick pocket means stealing stealing somebody's possession all right so pick pocket means to steal money or things from other people's pockets Set in the early 1800s, this is a story of a boy named Oliver who runs away from the orphanage where he is treated very cruelly. He arrives in London and gets caught in the big bad world of crime. This part of the story tells us how he meets Faggins' criminal gang and is taught to pick pockets. Oliver continued walking along the main road till he was tired. At night, he slept by the wayside. One morning, he met a young boy who introduced himself as John Dawkins, also known as the Artful Dodger. So now Oliver, as we know, he ran away from the orphanage and he had no place to go, he had no food to eat, he was very tired and very sad also and so he was continued he continued walking along the main road he was very tired and at night as i told you he did not have any place to sleep so he slept by the wayside wayside is the area by the road or a path and then one morning he met someone who introduced himself as john dawkins and he said he is also known as the artful dodger artful dodger is a person who can escape cleverly by tricking others dodger that means somebody who can um sort of cleverly trick another person so he called himself artful dodger his name was john dawkins dawkins was a stocky boy who wore clothes too big for him except for his size he looked and behaved like a grown up he offered to accompany oliver and introduced him 
to a gentleman and, and introduce him to a gentleman in London who would give him free board and lodging. Late that night, they reached the gentleman's house. So Dawkins was just a few years older than Oliver and he was a stocky boy. Stocky boy means short, stocky means short with a strong solid body. So he was a little bigger than Oliver. He wore clothes that were too big for him. It was not according to his size. It was a little loose for him. Except for his size, he looked and behaved like a grown-up or like a grown-up person. His behavior and mannerism was like a grown-up, even though he is also a child, just a barely few years older than Oliver. He wore clothes that were very loose, that did not fit him properly. And his mannerism was that of a grown-up person. Now, what did he do when he saw Oliver being there tired with no company and he did not have any place to go so he said he would offer him company he offered to accompany accompany means go along with him so he offered to accompany oliver and introduce him to a gentleman in london he said i'll introduce you to a person a very nice gentleman who would give oliver free food and lodging a place to stay Late that night, they reached the gentleman's house. So, board and lodging means food and a place to stay. Now, let's see what happens when they reach this gentleman's house. I have brought a new friend for you, Fagin. Dawkins introduced Oliver. Fagin was an old man with a long pointed beard and red hair. There were four or five other boys sitting in a corner all about Dawkins age. On a clothesline, a large number of silk handkerchiefs were hanging. I'm glad to meet you, said Faggins. The other boys came and shook Oliver's hands. After breakfast the next morning, Fagin asked the boys what they had bought, brought. Four silk handkerchiefs, said Bates, one of the boys. Very good. Would you like to be able to get such beautiful things, Oliver? Asked Fagin. Yes, sir, if you teach me. So, Oliver was introduced to Fagin. He was an old gentleman with a long and pointed beard and he had red hair. There were four or five other boys also with Fagin. They were sitting on a corner, all about Dawkins' age and on a clothesline. Clothesline is uh, where we hang clothes. After washing our clothes, we hang it on a, um, you know, a line, clothesline. On a clothesline, a large number of silk handkerchiefs were hanging. I'm glad to meet you, said Faggins. The other boys came and shook Oliver's hand. So Fagin was very happy to see Oliver and he said he was very glad or happy to see him. The other boys also introduced himself, themselves and they were happy to meet Oliver. They appeared to be happy to meet Oliver. And um, after breakfast the next morning, Fagin, he had asked the boys what they had brought with them. Four silk handkerchiefs, said Bates, one of the boys. He's saying, very good. Would you like to be able to get such beautiful things, Oliver? Now, Fagin is asking Oliver. And Oliver says, he, yes, yes, if you teach me, I will. So, on the surface, everyone appeared to be very good. They provided Oliver a place to live, a place to stay, and also food to eat. And Oliver being an orphan and he had nobody, no place to go, he was happy that he found this gentleman called Faggins and a group of boys. So he could be friends with them and he could lead a happy normal life. Right? And now let's see what incident follows after this. So um, when he saw, he, when he came there, he saw that the boys were, uh, they were four, there were silk handkerchiefs all around. And uh, Fagin was asking the boys, like, what they have brought. And so he did not understand. Oliver did not understand what was happening. But then Oliver told Fagin that if Fagin teaches him how to get the handkerchiefs, he will be able to give him. All right. 
Fagin and his boys began to play a game. Fagin dressed himself up like a rich man and put a wallet, a watch and other valuables in his coat pocket. He began to walk about the room, stopping now and then as if he was looking at a shop window. The boy walked behind the boys walked behind him, careful not to be seen. At a suitable moment, the artful dodger stood on Fagin's foot and another boy stumbled on him. From behind the other boys, in a moment, removed all the valuables from Fagin's pocket. The boys all moved away before the man could turn around. So, uh, Oliver felt that they were playing some sort of a game. So, according to Oliver, it was a happy place to be where he got free food and he was allowed to stay there. He had friends there and they were having fun all the time. So, he thought there was some major game being played over there. Like Faggins and his boy, between Faggins and his boy, boys. Fagin dressed himself up like a rich man. He dressed himself up like a rich man and what did he do? He put his wallet, he put a wallet, a watch and other valuable things in his coat pocket. And he began to walk about the room slowly and he used to stop now and then as if he was looking at a shop window. Right? So, um, normally when we go out, we do window shopping also, right? We just uh, look at the window uh, the windows on the shops just in search of things that we would like to buy right it's called window shopping so what was he doing this faggins he was walking about the room stopping now and then as if he was looking at a shop window the boys walked behind him and they were careful not to be seen now at a suitable moment what happened the artful dodger stood on faggins foot and another boy stumbled on him. Meaning of the word stumbled, almost fell or missed a step. Another boy stumbled on him and from behind, the other boys in a moment removed all the valuables from Fagin's pocket. So what were they doing? They were actually stealing the items from him. Right? They were picking his pocket. The boys all moved away from the man before the man could turn around. So before Faggins could turn around and see what was happening, all the boys just artfully moved away. Right? And valuables means costly things. Right, children? So what was happening here exactly? This Faggins, he was actually training them how to pick pockets. Right? So these boys, they were misled. It was actually a gang of thieves. And their main um, job was to pick pockets and bring the valuable items to Faggins. So it is clearly evident that Faggins was taking advantage of these young boys, teaching them how to steal from others and to bring him those valuable items. Right? So he was actually violating their childhood. He was actually misleading them and guiding them into a criminal world. All right. Bates and Dawkins will be great men, Oliver, said Faggins. Try to learn from them and you too will become famous. Now Bates and Dawkins, he's saying, will be, a great, will be great men, Oliver. Try to learn from them and you too will become famous. So Faggins is actually playing a psychological game with them. He is actually telling them that what they are doing is something really good and something that requires a lot of lot of skills and they would become famous because they are very good at what they do so this is clearly a case where children are being used by such negative or evil forces into doing things that is not acceptable by the society because all of you know stealing is an offense you cannot steal right but here boys are being trained to steal so that is how this, you can find pickpocketers all, around, all over in every place of the world, right? So same way, London was a big city where criminals were also um, in a large number and they take advantage of others. Just like how Faggins, he trained these young boys to steal. 
right? But then Oliver was so innocent that he did not know what was happening. He was just a child, a child of maybe 10 or 11 years old, who did not understand what was happening. Only later on he would come to realize what was happening, right? So I want you to read the lesson, all of you. Understand it and we will meet again in the next class. Thank you children.